All right, welcome back. Um, we're going to look at how to use our combinational component now to build a larger component. So looking back at a two to one multiplexer, we saw we had the formula where the output y is equal to not s d0 or s d1. And we have this circuit that we were able to derive from that formula. And we said that we could build this circuit into a component that would represent that circuit with a D0 input, a D1 input, a signal input, and an output. So this circuit is built inside that box, which means that if our S is a zero, we should see the output of D0. If our S is a one, we should see output of D1. So here we see that represented in a circuit. We have our two to one multiplexer here with an input zero, an input one, a signal, and an output. And we have a signal uh, wire here, and then we have our D0 input and our D1 input and our output Y. So if our signal coming in is a zero, we should be getting the output of D0. If we change our signal to a 1, we should get the output of D1. To create a 4 to 1 multiplexer, we now need two signal inputs. We can reuse our 2 to 1 multiplexers to create that 4 to 1. So here, I have these labeled wrong. Now we can see we have four inputs, D0, D1, D2, and D3, and we have two signals. Now remember, signal zero to a two to one multiplexer means whatever input is on its zero input is the output. A signal of a one means whatever is on the one input would be on the output. So for both of these 2 to 1 multiplexers, if S0 is a 0, we're saying take the input from the 1 side. So this controls which input to each one of these we're outputting from this to this next level. Then this signal is saying either take the output from the left side on zero, or if it's a one, take the input from the right side or the bottom side um, to be the output. So let's see it. If we want the output for D zero, we need signal zero to be zero and signal one to be zero. So if we now make this a one, notice we get a one because with this being a zero, we're taking the input from the zero input to the output. Notice here, even if this was a one, we would also be taking that input because we're enabling the zero side of both of these. All right, but notice this one is going into the one input of the next level, whereas the D0 is going into the zero input. With this as zero, we only look at what comes in through the zero input. So if we make this a zero, all right, so if we wanted to see D2, we would just make that a one and that a zero. And now whatever, I'm sorry, for D2, Oh, I have it backwards, I'm sorry. See, that's one of the problems with this layout is that these are now backwards to, to the truth table. So we just have to remember that. So now this is one, zero, or two. And so now we see 
whatever we make the two is what we're going to see on the output. If we turn both on, now we're going to see whatever is in the three. So here we see the configuration of an eight to one multiplexer using our two to one multiplexer components. Once again, for eight outputs, we need three inputs, or two to the three equals our eight outputs. So we have our inputs labeled D0 through D7. And then notice we have our three inputs. Once again, they have to be in the reverse order for the layout of these components of our binary tree. So we just have to remember to do the numbers in the reverse order. But it works exactly the same. What we see now is our S0, of course, is setting for this first row, whether we're taking the zero input or the one input for each one of those. As soon as we go to the S1, the zero is cutting off this entire bottom half, and we're only looking at the upper half then. If we set this to a one, we're only looking at the bottom half, or what's coming into the one input. Actually, I'm sorry, we're looking, we're cutting off those uh, we're, we're looking at uh, the bottom set of each one of these rows. I said that wrong. So for the zero, we're looking at either the, the zero side or the one side of all four of these. For the zero here, we're only looking at the, um, the left side here. So either that gate or that gate. And then when we get to the S2, now we're controlling whether we're either looking at this left side or this right side. But once again, we can simply use our, our numerical values. If we wanted to see the output of D4, we set S2 on, and then whatever is in D4 is what we're going to see on the output. If we wanted to see D6, we would set S1, S2, and now D6 is what we would see. All right, so that illustrates how we can reuse these components. We can then go further and define this whole component as a standardized 8 to 1 component. And we would get something like this where we have inputs 0 through 7 with our um, signals and our output. We should be showing three signals on here. I don't know why it's only showing one. But it should be showing three signals coming in with one output coming out. All right, so that's a summary of our multiplexers as our first example of developing combinational components where we build on a circuit to create a standardized component and then use those components to build larger components.